so fine guys um so basically this course we will be so discussing about data engineering as uh, i understand from you that uh, we are coming from different backgrounds uh, we would want to know what this data engineering is all about what is all is covered and what will become the part of this uh, data engineering uh, domain second thing is we will discuss about uh, the categories of data engineering uh, what are the different uh, uh, ways that companies adopt to data engineering third one is about uh, we will focus then towards google cloud data engineering like understanding uh, what this google cloud data engineering offers and uh, then third fourth one is we will see what the services are there in google cloud data engineering and some of them we will discuss like how what are how, to what extent we are going to learn all of these services here okay so these will, will be the four um, things that mostly we will be covering and in today's session, we will be only going through the briefly about uh, the uh, understanding what uh, the services are and how what will be our methodology of going for. Is this clear, guys? Okay. So, so what is this uh, data engineering is all about? Um, Data engineering is basically a disciple. Like a, it was not there early. A, it was not called. It, the uh, term was not called as data engineering prior to probably 2014, where nobody used to call this as data engineering. Uh, mostly there was an ETL uh, person would be doing this part. But then uh, uh, either they were working in silos, like a uh, person was either working in uh, BigQuery, uh, in, uh, sorry, in SQL Server, or here the person was doing some, writing some scripts to move data from one uh, one uh, location to another location. That was the way, way the you know, old technique used to work. And um, it was it was working fine uh, because uh, every, because all the uh, people are working in the same department. So you want to move from one computer to another computer it was all uh, working fine and that's what is uh, uh, and they were all uh, in silos but uh, the problem is that they would want to connect now so they want to do that they want to extract they want to load they want to do some uh, uh, bring some insights from this uh, data that they have stored and all of things then the problem point is that they need to join these all these together and uh, how do we do do that we first extract the data it could be from any data source in the company then you will transform it and when you mean transform you mean you are basically uh, changing its shape and uh, you are adding some aggregations on top of it so the data will come in different forms and shapes but you do not want to do uh, to use it as is you might want to join this data to some other data sets um, to make it more meaningful for example you want to have a uh, uh, you want to know how many orders a customer who has uh, placed so then you need a table called orders and then there is a table called customer and then you would want to we would want to join these two tables to get a meaningful insight to understand how what which customer for what, uh, what kind of orders and how many orders did he place uh, so this is a simple uh, equation looking at this table individually may not help but if you are going to if you are going to basically please stop me if you are having because i am not able to see the screen uh, if you are asking me any questions or anything just uh, just uh, talk okay guys so sure sir we'll do that yeah sure. yeah yeah so then uh, once the transformation so the in transformation there are three three types like one is called uh, basic transformation wherein you just extract the data and uh, remove all the junk values in it say so same not all every data is useful so you might want to remove some null values maybe null values you feel like your business feels that all these null values are all uh, fake they are not uh, proper values just remove them 
then you might uh, there should be there is another request like uh, say, say for example um, the marks of a student uh, and uh, marks of a student the maximum mark is 20 and uh, there is some 20 uh, marks like 22 and 25 obviously you do not want that because that doesn't make sense so that might be like an outlier or maybe a, um, some other uh, invalid value or uh, just remove it so these kind of rules that are applied to clean up the data is all basically the basic transformation so in the transformation layer basically that is what it is happening then after that the joining happens so you join this table with the other table to get some uh, proper data and uh, third one is aggregations so basically you want to do a sum of uh, particular um, orders for a customer placed on a so and so date uh, and uh, you want to make sense of like okay on which particular date what kind of orders are being placed mostly by customers that's the visualization maybe that's what you want to analyze so that's what is the, the third part of transformation that happens and then after that once the, you have all this transformation you will uh, choose the loading mechanism where do you want to store this data and when you are planning to choose the store storage you would uh, what for you obviously you would want to know you would want to know where you want so what purpose what is the purpose of storing this data so is it, is it for a temporary purpose or is it this storage what i am uh, what i am looking for is for some doing some kind of an analytical purpose or is it uh, is it for some uh, downstream and what at what frequency am i processing this data so if it and uh, how much data i have have, have i processed because it all determines the storage what kind of storage that you are going to pick basically and once you are done with that you would basically load in, into the storage which is basically this part of that which where the load part of it is coming and then once that is loaded you will be we would want to analyze this data and when you mean analyze making sense of this data like uh, what is this data contain whether it is a meaningful data that I have picked or uh, what are all the things that uh, I can make sense of um, like um, like uh, like for example I, um, in this case we apply different queries to uh, see like okay this particular data uh, brings me this particular features and when these features means that uh, basically there is a pattern that you are want to observe in this data and that patterns are very helpful for the downstream especially let's say for example there is a data science team that is uh, that would want the data to be uh, that they want and then this data scientist would basically create this some uh, something called as a machine learning algorithm models and for machine learning models the input is basically a feature set feature set which they call and that feature set is nothing but a set of patterns so that patterns however who are going to provide the data engineer is going to provide those patterns like in the form of okay we're helping him to understand okay during this pattern during this window this is how it looks like for example let me give you with an example there was a spine project uh, i was working like a person uh, in the um, spine department in the, in the medical industry i was so they were taking these samples of data so if it's for people who are sitting standing walking and uh, running and uh, for the for every one minute or two minutes of data that they have taken we would want to uh, store this data aggregated data into a data warehouse and then visualize it on the uh, some kind of a tableau dashboard we will and uh, when we were looking at it obviously nothing comes we don't know like at uh, uh, what is the it is making sense of so but then once the domain expert uh, helped uh, with the help of domain experts dot a the data engineer has identified that well the uh, there is an x axis and a y axis and a z axis and that x y z axis is basically is uh, giving you some information hidden information that is that if you plot this graph over z axis and that z axis is going uh, is plotting the graph in certain manner when the person is running then that becomes an important feature for the data engineer for the data scientist to cap, you know, to consider him for machine learning model so he can use this uh, information which data engineer provides and then build models on it and come up with the some kind of a prediction like 
whether this person is uh, suffering from a spine problem or not this could be one use case he can come up with so so that is what we are planning uh, that the data engineering so will be doing data engineer will be doing so here if you look at it that's what for the analysis part is all about and then obviously once the analysis is done he, he would, would want to visualize and in this case in the spine part of it as i mentioned you are going to visualize going to visualize it on the using the tab view environment or maybe the power boy, power bi uh, somebody as somebody said mm, so you are going to visualize this and then make sense of it like why what is it it is happening once you know about that that these are the features or these are the features or this is the data that you are getting the second thing is this has changed uh, the next thing is obviously they would want to model it so basically they are run the machine learning models the machine learning models will provide you some, some more inputs uh, some more information like in this case they will give you uh direction like okay whether this person has any problem in this case like a, a spine issue or not or maybe if there is a fraudulent case happened or not in a with a with a data bank transaction something of that sort can be made available and that is the main purpose of our data engineering pipeline in today's world uh, it was not like earlier every company has a enormous data but they what is it that they want to do with this data they want to grow they want to be one step ahead from the competitor they want to do, be smart so when i mean smart it means that predicting the what uh, could what are the opportunities that they have in the future so how are they going to predict that the opportunities that they can grab uh, basically using the historical data so in the historical data uh, where is it it is in our data warehouse but we don't know how to use it so how are we going to do that we are going to make you to use of these tools the analytical tools the visualization tools and the modeling tools to make sense of what this uh, what this data is providing what is it that they are trying to tell us and how are we going to um, maneuver ourselves in our in the business so that is what it is used for and then once the model is created we are then going to operationalize it Uh, that means you are going to have to put it on to the production uh, how are we going to do that uh, the, that's another part which we call it as ml ops machine learning operations and then once that is done it is going to be monitored so that means that my, when after the ml algorithms and the application is deployed on the production it is going to be continuously monitored and uh, during this monitoring process they have their own um, what we call the metrics and this matrix is basically used for understanding the health of the application the health of these uh, models if they are going if they sense if this matrix are going to sense that this model or the application is deteriorating over time so over like something that is working today will not, um, may not work like 6 months down the line preferences might change your data might change is there are many things that uh, that will change uh, basically because of which you are uh, the same model that you have built today that the same data that you have uh, pulled from different sources may not be uh, actually relevant uh, after one year or two years so it has to be continuously monitored so what whether the you are still getting the relevant data or what if there is any differences then what is it that you and here we have to understand that there are two types of uh, monitoring one is the data drift which is basically the uh, the data engineering will do so basically he needs to understand okay here is the data and this is how the uh, boundaries are say for example say there is a sensor that would uh, that is basically providing you the input uh, input of temperatures uh, like uh, on a daily basis or maybe on an hourly basis so this monitoring tool basically would basically check whether that uh, temperatures are correctly provided or correctly coming into the data pipeline whenever there is a deviation in the uh, in the temperatures obviously it will first time it will look then it will try to understand the patterns like okay what what at what times this uh, uh, temperatures are dipping going beyond the thresholds the, there is a threshold limit that we are going to provide like our temperature of a particular place should we expect it to be between 25 and 30 but uh, if it is going beyond or below this particular temperature 
uh, then obviously it, um, it will start to understand the pattern at what at what intervals on which part uh, which time of the day this is happening or which time of the week or whatever it is and then it is happening frequently and then it starts to sense that there is a pattern it is observing immediately it will it will alert it will send an alert saying that there is something going wrong with this data please check and then the obviously the data engineer will basically notify to the operation uh, will be sent to the operational team will send this information to the data engineer data engineer should go and check how whether if there is something has changed in his data engineering pipeline and then it will go trace back it will go it will basically they have to reverse engineer they will, then he will say no this is not my problem maybe the data source that is coming into my system may be having a problem and then they go back and go and maybe they will might find that there is a problem with some sensor or maybe it is a re really an issue and then what they have to do they will put something they will recalibrate that uh, values or they have to remove it or do whatever it's all about uh, the data domain how we do a domain expert how he wants to handle it but point what i want to make here is that there is a monitoring service that is there in the cloud which we have to use to understand this type of patterns and help the uh, business that this is what is happening and this is what is uh, the behavior we earlier this was the situation the data was coming within this range now it is not the situation to that extent at least we will have to put them up. and there is uh, this is what is all about uh, monitoring and once if they feel that no this is not correct you need to replace this with some other data uh, data point then obviously it will again come through the extraction so that means that they will again say that okay this particular column x which you are which we were taking earlier from column x this is not uh, the data is not able to come then this x should be replaced by with, with another column called y and then that y column will be taken as the input now and uh, so obviously that x in the extraction layer instead of take uh, considering x column we will the y column will be considered as input and that y column will be transformed load analyzed visualized and then will be the patterns will be uh, will be picked from that which also called as features and then a model will be created and then operationalized and then the monitoring happens so this is how the all the entire data in, uh, engineering pipeline would look like so it is what i am trying to say convey is data engineering pipeline is not just uh, confined to an etl pipeline it goes beyond a little bit it is, this is way earlier it was like just working in silos but now we, the concept of this data engineering has changed and another point is for every point every layer like whether it is extraction transformation load analyze visualize model operationalize monitor they are all all should be be secure so you do not want the data to be compromised in any of these stages so that means that uh, say that is why the security should uh, is placed in the center and uh, we, for everything that you are we are doing we should uh, ever the whoever the architect that is basically building this uh, um, uh, data engineering pipeline should also understand that our data is not compromised or it is not leaked to anything that is uh, to some other uh, domain or maybe some other department which doesn't require your data so that so you have to make sure that this is always a secure and governed properly so this is about this uh, data engineering all about so guys do you understand this part any questions okay so basically yeah. I have a doubt. Yes. so as you explained so this is uh, like this uh, etl tool is mainly used in data uh, this uh, data size apart from that any uh, other real time uh, use it has because we uh, exp uh, you explained about uh, machine learnings and all so apart from that any yeah. other uh, real time use it has the etl tool the data engineering yes correct so you see uh, data engineering uh, the real time if i have to you are asking me an example that is there in the real time is it how yeah are? yeah so because uh, we I, uh, like as you explained so uh, uh, data set machine learning that is uh, fine that i have understood apart yeah. from that any other example can you give 
visualization so if you want to visualize these patterns say for example as i mentioned that example is about the spine uh, now you think maybe uh, i should have given more uh, specific so i was there we so there is some project which one of these medical devices company was doing and that is like this they wanted to understand how um, they were trying to basically uh, predict person with uh, having uh, spine issue with a person who is not having spine issue so that is the predict a model that they want to do but to do that obviously they want two sets of data one is the data with person people set of people who have this problem and second is they want a set of people who do not have uh, this problem which they call test subjects and there are two types of subjects one with problematic subjects and the other second is the non problematic healthy subjects which we call it as now there are like this what they do is they put a patch like sensor patch on their back and ask them to do five types of activities or over a period of uh, one minute each activity spanning for one minute uh, for like five minutes so one minute, uh, what are they going to do what they are going to first stand then walk then sleep then stand then drive a car so basically the, this uh, the five minutes will be over this uh, doing these activities and, and they will collect data the sensor will basically what it do is it is having four to five sensors uh, that the patch that is there on their that they have put it on their bag will have five sensors one is uh, it will capture the x y z movements of a person so front back left right uh, and uh, top uh, so when you are somebody is standing or walking you will there is a vertical movement there is a horizontal movement there is a, a there is a uh, shift in their torso that means there is an angular movement so all these are basically captured you know, by the sensor and they are all uh, coming at what frequency at around 300 uh, hertz and that means that 300 data points per second per second what you are getting is one record uh, sorry we are getting 300 records of this information that i mentioned that is x y z torso that is angular movement then there is a there is a um, pitch pitch and roll which we call that means that the movements across your uh, torso so all these are all captured there are like 20 different parameters 20 columns uh, that uh, of information that we get at every second and one record will have one record will have 12 or 20 record 20 columns like that 300 hertz means that 300 day records of information per second is what the day sensor would say and this uh, data if it is coming so much and you will get it for the healthy persons and the normal uh, and the non healthy person then you, what you do is you pass it through the ETL transformation, like transform, load, analyze, and then visualize it using Power BI. Assume, let's say this Power BI. And when you visualize this, what we can visualize is we will visualize it for with the X axis, Y axis, Z axis, and uh, different columns. And understand like, okay, here is what, let's say uh, there is a pattern that we are going to understand. Uh, that there is, a, uh, there is a match between Z axis and then there is a power, there is an angular moment. And this, this type of uh, um, pattern between z axis and the angular moment uh, for uh, if we are if we are mapping it onto our uh, power bi if this is considered to be a problematic person and this is considered to be a healthy person obviously who is going to annotate it is it is the subject matter expert who will, will help us but then once he does tells us that okay this is what it is then it is us who have to take okay uh, okay if this part of data is within these ranges then that means that it becomes a uh, kind of a uh, unhealthy kind of a person the data set becomes an unhealthy uh, subjects data set so then you it will become a part of your data pipeline so you have to basically visualize this and then that data will basically be go to the uh, model wherein this model will basically take two sets of data sets one is unhealthy subjects and the healthy subjects and uh, try to train evaluate and then predict which of this is basically a healthy or a unhealthy kind of a subject once you know that whether this person who is uh, unhealthy or who is uh, uh, who is healthy then obviously you would want to take this model and operationalize send it to uh, into production so how are you going to uh, take it to the production that is the operationalizing part of it and then after that this model 
uh, whatever is there in the production may not work always. So let's say, for example, a Z axis, which we have considered in this case as a feature for a model training. Maybe after 20, 10 months, this model, assume that this model, you are bringing it from, a, this model was built on a European set of people and you brought it to Asia, into India. Then uh, this model doesn't use, doesn't behave properly. Why? Because our for us the Z axis doesn't make sense. I have been just speak, trying to tell you that Z is not significant for us. It might be turning out like our uh, and only the angular movement of the Asians, Indians might be a problem, which is causing a problem for them uh, in this. So that means that you have to take a different set of data now, start and transform it. So that means because of the geographical uh, problem. You have to try to take different set of data for different subjects now. And then again, you have to train, go to the evaluation and then again come through this operation. So your model should know that there is a different set for uh, your uh, Asians and there is a different set for Africans and another set for Europeans. So basically my point is that data engineering uh, is not confined to only ETL now. Data engineering, the data scientist might ask, well, I am not getting the features what I am looking for. You have provided me some data, but that data is not making me any sense. It is not able to differentiate between unhealthy or unhealthy. Then what is it that data engineer should do now? He will, uh, should he say that, no, my uh, whatever you are, have been asked, I have done it. This is the ETL transformation and over. My job is closed. No. Uh, according to the new data, uh, new, new definition that is the latest uh, the cloud definition or the latest definition of data engineering is that we need to understand what he is trying to do basically what kind of features he is going to build and how are these features coming from our data so, so basically we need to wear multiple hats here so you need to understand what is the features he is using and what is he trying to do is he just using as is the data coming what we the data engineer is sending or is he still further transforming that to bring some other features you understand my point and same is the case with the visualization expert the power bi guy he what are you doing we are we, the data engineer will provide the uh, information to the power bi and power bi the, there he is not able to depict or he is not able to understand this data then what is he going to do? He will again come back to the data engineering person and the data engineer and the Power BI guy should uh, sit together and understand why he is not able to visualize. That means the data engineer himself should know a Power BI concept and he will be, maybe he will be working on the uh, Power BI as well. Similarly is the case with monitoring, operationalizing and monitoring, the DevOps guy. He needs to work with the DevOps to set up the data, the build pipeline. And then he has to work with the operation teams to um, uh, to understand, to build the uh, metrics pipeline, what we call the alerting and metrics pipeline, uh, metrics uh, part of it, uh, mechanism. So for, to establish a met, um, alerting mechanism, we have to work with uh, the monitoring team. So, so and basically alerting means that, well, this model, if it is not working properly, if the data is not coming properly, then there should be an alert that will say uh, that, okay, there is, you need to go, guys, data engineering team, you need to go back and then see what is happening. So that is what it is. So basically what I'm trying saying is that data engineering is not just limited to uh, ETL or maybe some writing queries or anything. Uh, yes, in a big larger project, when you are working on a big project, they might ask like, okay, you work on this, uh, maybe on a queries, maybe depending on the your experience, you might be asked to work on some big query or maybe some other thing. But uh, when it comes to the uh, larger, uh, small as a whole, as a data engineering, as a discipline, all these are covered. And you might be working on any of this, uh, uh, of this sections uh, at point of different point of your career. So does this answer your question? Yes, sir, I have followed. Yeah. Okay. So I'll go quick now. So these different types of data engineering, we have on-premise and on-cloud. So that means that uh, 
um, before clouds or maybe so there are organizations who do not want they are reluctant to go on to cloud because of various reasons they do not they don't like to go into cloud because their they have to take their data to the cloud 